Good morning to you. I'm Danilo Evangelista, and welcome to our update on Major Hurricane Barrel this morning, a historic hurricane of epic, epic, epic proportions, especially for those in the southern and windward islands, not only for July, but in terms of records as a whole. Um, Barrel is a Category 4, and I'm going to go over in just a little bit, but this is not a hurricane that they deal with all the time and it is definitely a historic hurricane for sure so let's get right let's get right into the update this morning latest national hurricane center advisory as of 9 a.m because they they did a position update at 9 a.m um minimum pressure down to 957 millibars and the maximum sustained winds are 130 miles an hour and it is now starting to move at a west northwest pace of 20 miles per hour recon is in the storm right now um and they're finding barrel is beginning to intensify again after the storm went through an iowa replacement cycle last night it was able to finish up this morning and now as we're heading into the durinal maximum period of the day it's just making everything fall in place again that barrel is going to rapidly intensify and recon is in there right now and they're already finding that barrel is already doing so um, and, this, and this is just going to set up to be a really bad situation for the islands, especially those in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Grenada this morning. Um, and if you're watching from those islands, the best thing I suggest to you to do now is to get into the interior most portion of whatever building you are in. Um, stay away from windows at all costs. If you're along the coastline, you should really have moved further inland because not only is this storm bigger, and not only is this storm going to be an intensifying storm as it passes through the islands, but it is likely to be a bigger storm as well since it went through an eyeball replacement cycle overnight. Really quickly, though, before we move on, just want to mention Chris also formed last night out of Tropical Depression um, three which formed in the Bay of Campeche uh, yesterday. So Chris, very quick storm, um, moved the inland over Mexico quickly, only became 40 miles an hour, um, but it is bringing lots of heavy rain to Mexico regardless, but it probably won't last that much longer. In fact, once the 11 a.m. advisory comes out, I won't be surprised if they make Chris a remnant low already. Um, but here's the latest satellite image of Barrel. Um, really an incredible storm, especially for the month of July. Um, and once again, it seems like that this storm will probably be at its worst for portions of the Grenadine Islands and the whole Windward Islands as, as in, in general is going to get hurricane force winds. Um, and you could see very circular eye or the eye is at least clearing. Um, there's also lots of convection wrapping around the center of barrel, um, meaning that the storm is intensifying. And recon is actually in there right now. The latest pressure fixing was 960 millibars. Let me see if they updated. Yeah, they did update it, and they found the latest pressure to be at 956 millibars. Um, so the pressure has dropped since they were last in there, and actually is is a millibar, one millibar lower than what the National Hurricane Center has as of the 9 a.m. update. So barrel is strengthening, um, and it is probably going to be a strengthening storm as it approaches the Windward Islands this morning. And we can also see it, I'm going to get that ad out of the way, but you can also see it on radar as well. Um, this is Grenada. So if you're watching from Grenada, if there's any sort of hope I can give is that this it looks like the eye wall and the eye of the storm will not pass over Grenada. It's really looking like at a target for the Grenadine Islands at this point. Um, but Grenada is still likely to get into the hurricane force wind field. As once again, I mentioned, the hurricane force winds did um, increase in its size at this point because the storm underwent an eyewall replacement cycle, meaning, um, and the radar seems to have went out. Uh, I don't know what happened, but I'm just going to bring it back to the satellite. What happened with Barrel overnight is that it what underwent an eyewall replacement cycle, meaning that its inner eyewall that it had at the time um, shed, and outer bands of the storm kind of formed in another eyewall around the inner eyewall that we had at the time basically means that the storm grew in size since then 
and now the eyewall replacement cycle has completed and barrel is intensifying again and it looks like it is going to be a strengthening category for hurricane as it once again approaches um the windward islands um this morning in fact probably imminent to make a landfall within the next several hours um and this is really unusual for them because um and i found this tweet by brian mcnulty it really points it out the only other major hurricane to pass within 100 miles of where barrel is on monday morning was ivan back in the infamous year of 2004 in September, and that was at category three intensity. And I think this last part really um, should be an eye opener. These islands have no experience with a category four hurricane in recorded history. So Barrel is gonna be history in the making for them. This will absolutely be a storm for the Windward Islands that people will remember for years to come. Um, and it's just going to be an overall devastating storm, and there's really nothing we could do about it at this point, especially that it is only hours from landfall, um, and it is likely to remain a hur major hurricane after that into the Caribbean. So after we deal with the impacts um, from the Windward Islands, which will probably be sometime later this morning into the early afternoon when we're going to see the direct landfall, um, as I said, Barrel is going to continue to be a strengthening major hurricane up to that point. Um, it looks like it'll probably be strengthening up until at least tomorrow when it reaches the Eastern Caribbean. And then after that, after we deal with this impact in the Windward Islands, we're going to have to start watching really closely um, in the Caribbean for potential further impacts down the line. In fact, um, this is the latest, I think, as of this morning. You could actually see the National Hurricane Center now has tropical storm watches in effect for the southern portions of the island of Hispaniola, including southern Haiti and the Dominican Republic. But obviously right now we still got to focus on Barrel since it is still very much a threat within the next 24 hours um, to the Windward Islands. Let's just really quickly go over all the warnings that are in place right now. A hurricane warning is in effect for Barbados, St. Vincent, and the Grenadine Islands, um, Grenada as well, and also Tobago. A tropical storm warning is in effect for Martinique, um, Trinidad, and St. Lucia. I think St. Lucia actually was in a hurricane warning earlier, so I guess things are looking a little better for you guys in St. Lucia that I think they downgraded it to a tropical storm warning. Still going to get impacts nonetheless with, the, with this storm no matter what, especially those that are in the hurricane warning area. Um, and there is a tropical storm watch right now in effect for the south coast of the Dominican Republic from Punta Palenqua um, westward to the border with Haiti and then the coast and then the south coast of Haiti from the border with the Dominican Republic to I'm not going to pronounce this name, but somewhere um, along the southern coast of Haiti in general, southern Haiti and southern Dominican Republic right now is under a tropical storm watch. So that means as we move, as the storm moves into the Caribbean, we're going to have to start monitoring the progress of it for interest in the central Caribbean as well. Um, but the, but once again, it's still going to bring impact within the next 24 hours to people in the Windward Islands. And let's go over what some of those impacts will be. Probably the most important thing that I want to mention, the storm surge. Um, and six to nine feet is expected, but I wouldn't even be surprised if it's a little higher than that, although it really depends on what island you are. Um, but once again, the storm is stronger, it's going to be intensifying, and it's also going to be um, slightly larger as well. Um, so storm surge will be at least six to nine feet, and trust me, that is life-threatening, especially if you're right at the coast. Um, as I said before, and I said yesterday in my update, I'm six feet, so the storm, so the storm surge is going to be right at my head, and obviously I could still drown in that because it's going to be submerging me completely, um, and I'm and I'm pretty sure a storm surge of six to nine feet will submerge most general people on average um, completely. It is just not a survivable storm surge, even though this is not the worst storm surge that we that we've seen in a hurricane, especially in the past. It is still life-threatening, and you definitely should not um, take risks with it at all. So if you're near the coast, please, um, if you can, because I'm not even sure if there's time anymore because um, the, winds, the winds are already being felt in some of these islands. 
um, and landfall is expected probably within the next several hours. Um, but if you're at the coast, try to get to the highest elevation or highest level you possibly can um, to be able to avoid the storm surge as much as possible. But there's also a rainfall threat, which is expected. Um, and I'm actually going to bring this map up here, Hurricane Barrel. Um, this is a tropical storm after all, so there will be rainfall issues with it too. Um, some places um, throughout the entire islands um, is looking generally at least three to six inches for most places in terms of rain, but there could be locally, locally areas, especially in Tobago and Grenada and even the Grenadine Islands, it seems like. Um, areas of locally we could see up to eight or even ten inches of rain um, and that'll cause an, a whole other layer of flooding concerns and potential um, threat as well for risk of loss of life from that too because there's a storm surge and then there's the flooding rains too um, and I really want to bring that point home because the rain is the number one killer um, in a hurricane, not even the winds. The winds will definitely be a very huge threat with this storm, especially since it is going to be a high-end Category 4 hurricane. And really quickly before I end, I just wanted to end on this satellite loop just to kind of give an idea of how ominous it's looking, especially compared to the rest of the Atlantic. We really don't get these kind of storms, um, especially for the date that is early July. Um, but it looks like now that we do have a storm like this, we just got to deal with it. And it's going to be something that the islands are going to have to deal with over the next several hours as barrel passes through. And once again, it's going to be it's going to be a it's going to be a historic storm in the making. There's just no doubt about it. And I'm pretty sure for the next several weeks and months ahead, um, we're going to be talking about the storm. I should say for the next several years we're probably going to be talking about Barrel, especially given that this was happening all on the 1st of July. We're not even into the peak season yet. And that just really sets a bad precedence for the rest of this hurricane season to come. Um, the fact that we're already getting storms like this and we're not even into August yet, it just goes to show the Atlantic is very primed this season, like we've been saying since the beginning of the year and people have been warned, people have been warning us about for months now we're seeing it play out in real time but unfortunately we're obviously seeing the effects that hurricanes will have as well when it comes to the loss of life as what they're about to experience today um in the southern windward islands it's really an unfortunate thing especially because of how interesting and how you know cool almost i don't want to sound insensitive about this but especially because of how cool you know hurricanes be it's so it's so unfortunate that such interesting and fascinating forces of nature like hurricanes are can just cause so much damage loss of life and just completely change people's lives and it seems like once again that's probably going to be the case in the islands unfortunately as Her hurricane barrel passes through today so obviously given that this is a historic moment i'm not going to be um, not posting throughout the rest of the day. This is not the only update you'll see from me on YouTube today. Probably going to do another update later this after, later this morning into the afternoon, or that might be a live stream instead. Still got to figure it out, but we'll see. Um, but if not, I really hope that you found, found this video informative. I really hope, um, hopefully maybe this video cleared up any sort of speculations about Barrel that you had, any sort of uncertainty with um, if so, I really hope that you like, comment, subscribe, share with family and friends, especially those that are about to be impacted um, in the islands this morning by Burrow. And stay tuned for more updates throughout the day today um, on YouTube here and on Twitter as well. Uh, my Twitter hint, my Twitter name is the same name I have on YouTube, Danilo Evangelista. In fact, I'll be posting more often probably on Twitter today than on YouTube. It's just easier to make a quick, simple post on Twitter than to upload another 10, 15, 20 minute video like I do on YouTube. So definitely follow me on Twitter then. Um, stay safe. Um, peace, love, and kindness to you all. Um, may God bless all of you, especially if you're in the past of this storm. Um, and we will talk again very, very soon.